open field can really generate big plays for offense. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so... And a big loss here as he's taken down. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. To throw is Watson. Flush to his right. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. That scramble good for 13 yards, but not good enough for a first down. It's fourth. Well, it's not going to be a first down, but that's a nice job of picking up yardage on third and long. Sometimes you just have to take what the defense gives you. And in this case, it wasn't enough to pick up the first down. They will indeed snap it to Watson. Buying time to his left. Got an open man. It's QT. They go for it on fourth down, and it pays off big time as they pick up 29. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Showing it. Showing it. Now a 20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone. Under pressure now, Watson, and down he goes. Miles Jack picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. Steps away to his left. And a throw there going to be incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well. So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. On first down, Watson. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The linebacker, Telvin Smith, able to get a hand on it there. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. To throw is Watson. To throw on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out. Yeah. 
so the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. In 2018, Deshaun Watson had five fourth-quarter comebacks. Only Drew Brees of the Saints had more with six. A throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins once again the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. Here's Watson being chased out left. Oh, I can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Here we go on fourth. Watson flushed out right. He finds his target, Fuller. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Defensively, a bit of a collapse, allowing the fourth down play to result in 23 yards. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And this will go... It's a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, it's Watson. To the right side and complete to Thomas. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the Jags grab it. So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Watson and the Texans now. Down by six. A minute 25 to play. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and ten. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does, and in the second quarter, he may very well run by him, but in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. He'll look to throw, and this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remember an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual...
player. No chance at all. Way easier said than done. Rolling to his right. And that'll be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. He can run for it, and he will. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movements. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock, feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. You get blocked, Come on, Blackney. You get blocked. He's back to throw. Dancing to his left. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. That is caught at the seven. A first down there on a pickup of 25. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need it. Touchdown and the PAT for the lead. Back to throw. Eluding the pressure right. This will be caught just inside the 10. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. What we got? What we got? What we got? They'll look to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown. And now they're an extra point away from winning this thing in the final seconds. Well, that's the one they had to have. Put them in a position where they're tied up, but I got to get out of the way. We still got an extra point that's pretty crucial. That's right. Just one more element to complete the victory. So a very interesting final chapter to this proverbial book here in this one because they were in field goal range, could have won it with a field goal, elect to go for the touchdown. I still don't know what they were doing. As great as this game was and as dramatic an ending as we had, the post-game press conference is going to be key because they're going to be asking Coach, why not a field goal attempt there? You got an opportunity to win it right there with your, with your guy, and instead you run another play. Yeah, we might need to stop by that press conference on our way out the back door here. Yeah, just slow down the plane for us, all right? We got we to gotta get an answer before we go. So for Houston, it's a win here in their home opener as they move to 2-0. And they will hit the road next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they'll fall to 1-1. One and, one, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against Jacksonville. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.